Hello and welcome to Ticker Climate. My name's Holly Stearns. On Ticker Climate, we tackle the climate crisis that is facing our planet and we examine what actions governments and corporations need to be taking. My lovely co-host Scott Hamilton joins me now and our guest for today is the wonderful Chris McGrath. Hello to you both. Hello Holly, how are you today? Great to have your company. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Thanks so much. Great to see you all both again. Now for our Good audience, day, Chris. Chris went from working for a big corporate to now being the founder of one of the most innovative solar companies in the world. Chris, can you just give us a rundown again of exactly what you do at 5B and I guess how you're pioneering the sector? We're developing what we hope to be the world's lowest cost, fastest solar farm. Um, we're developing a, a platform to be able to roll out solar faster and more widespread um, than ever before and, and really at, at a pace that is required to avert climate change for the world. Hi, Chris. Great to, great to see you again, mate. Thanks so and, much. Um, Likewise. No worries. And so we just had the biggest climate conference in a decade, which was at COP26 at Glasgow. And it was great to see some of your team members there showing off the great new technology that you guys have been leading. Now, one of the interesting things I found at that conference was really the emergence of Chile as one of the new superpowers in renewable energy. And I understand that 5B has been expanding into that area. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, COP26 was a was a, a real mark in time, I think, for climate change action globally. And um, I think David Attenborough summarised it very well in his opening remarks, um, referring to it as a as an industrial revolution that, that we're staring at. Um, and, and when we think about that, we see both the need for clean electricity to be powering um, population centres um, and also the renewable energy superpowers that are required behind the world to be producing all of the materials and the resources and the energy um, products or, um, or resources to be able to um, power that transition. Uh, and Chile looks um, quite similar to Australia in many ways in terms of its potential to be a renewable energy superpower. Um, there's a lot of mining and resources there. There's an incredible solar resource there. The Atacama Desert, um, which is an incredible natural place, um, is one of the highest solar radiation, uh, highest yielding locations in the world for solar, very high altitude, lots of sunshine, cool temperatures. Um, so it's a re really amazing location to be, to be working in. The Chilean government has some, um, has some very ambitious um, targets um, for, for um, cap capturing that as, as Australia does. Um, and they're re really getting behind it. And we've got our first um, few projects rolling out there um, this, this year to be hopefully building um, that into a, into a much bigger um, thing um, throughout 2022 and beyond. Yeah, it's remarkable. It sounds like there's so many incredible opportunities there. And as you said, it sort of just fits in to move into that space where there's so many resources. Um, Scott, I'm keen to get your views on Chile. Yeah, so it's really uh, fascinating as we move into this um, this next decade about who are going to be the renewable energy superpowers of the world. And clearly Chile is right up there. It is one of the countries with the biggest solar potential per square kilometre, um, as, as Chris was saying. So it's got enormous potential. But it's also got really strong climate policies, which I've spent a bit of time looking at recently. It's got strong targets. It's got a strong infrastructure plan to make sure we can get that solar resource to where it's needed. So transmission plan is really important. And it's going to legislate its targets, which is actually quite important, we've found, for businesses to have confidence to invest in these sorts of places. So it's really exciting. So Chile and is going to be right up there with Australia, I hope, as well as Saudi Arabia is also one of the big countries with a huge potential in this space. And the other one is Egypt, which is where the next Conference of the Parties, COP26, COP27 is going to be held, which we're looking forward to next year. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, now moving on, I guess um, a competitor, with, a co-competitor with countries like Australia and the Saudi Arabia and places like Egypt with the biggest energy potential per square kilometre in the world. Um, Chris, just elaborate on that a little bit for us, the exact potential here. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts and processes behind moving into these places? I think what we're, what we're staring at is, is this incredible transition for the world and uh, the, the numbers that, that, that we crunch kind of suggest that solar will be built out at about 60 times the capacity or needs to be and will build, be built out at about 60 times the capacity that we currently have in the world by 2050. Um, and, and that's a huge transition and a huge growth on top of an already um, very growing industry. So where we stare at that, we ask the question of like, well, how does that, how is that going to work? How does that need to be built? What are the things we need to do differently to, to do that? And for us, it's about speed. And when we talk about speed, we, we think about speed on the um, on the project basis and also speed to build the industry and to grow the industry. Um, and then we're also talking about resource efficiency to be able to do that in, in the time required. Um, and then we also think about well, which markets are going to be really pivotal in, in, in actually moving the dial on that. Um, and we, we've gone both to um, India and US this year as really, really significant population centres in the world. And then also we're in Australia, obviously, um, and to Chile and see those as, as two very significant um, kind of resource centres in the world. And we'll continue to grow that out in time. There's always a balance, I guess, of, mm. of focus versus spread and, and speed versus traction and, and getting, getting that dance right. Yeah, incredible. Now, you, um, as well as Latin America, you just mentioned there, you'll be expanding into the US as well as India. Talk to us about that expansion um, and how that process has been for you guys so far. Yeah, US is a really exciting place for us. Our, our largest investor, AES, is one of the one of the US's largest solar developers. So it's awesome um, to be launching into their home market and, and with a lot of support from them. Um, we've got some awesome, awesome new customers in that market. Um, we've established what we call the 5B Ranch in, uh, in Austin, Texas, is our um, base in the US. Um, we've got an amazing team there now, seven people in total. Um, we've built that during um, 2021. Um, I visited them for the first time um, two weeks ago, which was kind of a, a really fun experience having not met them face to face, which a, a lot of the world is going through. Um, the US has got some really, um, really progressive policies behind um, driving the, the clean energy transition, but also really recognising the economic benefit and the jobs opportunity in that, which really sits around this, this whole kind of COVID economic recovery or springboard. Um, so we're really, really looking forward to kind of capturing a, a lot of those opportunities in the market, but also more specifically in the supply chain, it's going to be a lot of shift towards US centric supply chain. And we're really leaning into that at, at the moment. I think that'd be a big part of our strategy there. This is terribly exciting, Chris, um, from a company that I've watched over, I think about the last two years, go from a effectively a startup with less than 30 people. I think our last count that I heard, you had more than 140 people on the books. Um, and it's now really a global company. It's a juggernaut. It's fantastic. And it's not, uh, it's really thinking about across the world, Latin America, USA, India. Can, can you tell us what is next on, on, on the agenda for 5B? It's terribly exciting. It, it, it is. I describe it as slightly terrifying and incredibly exciting <laughs> at the same time. It's, um, it's, it's an amazing journey to be on and the, and the team we have is incredible. Um, we're now at 165, I think is the latest count. So um, every, every few weeks we need to update our, our figures. Um, we've got some really, really exciting uh, milestones that we're going to be hitting, um, hopefully by, by Christmas in the sprint towards Christmas and otherwise just into the new year, which we'll be able to talk about a, a little bit more as they happen. But I think generally the, um, the, the phase change that we're going through now is that we've laid a lot of foundation pieces. We've been going for seven years now. We've got uh, 30 to 40 megawatts of product on the ground. We've got another 20 megawatts in production and, and an order book that's starting to fill out. And really we're sitting here now with the Australian market pretty established uh, and, and first Mavs and first customers and first, first team in Chile, US and, and India, which all represent some really huge markets for us. We're looking where we grow beyond that, um, of course, as well, but really kind of um, the next phase for us is kind of growing that scale from those foundations that we've put into place. And a really, really important theme around that for us will be automation and advanced manufacturing. So we've kind of developed 
what we describe as a platform for automation to bring automation to solar tech and deployment of solar tech, but we haven't actually done it yet because we've been at, at modest scale. Um, we haven't had the, the resources to do it or the volume to justify it yet. Um, so by the end of 2022, we should have our first Mavericks rolling out of advanced manufacturing facilities here in Australia, developing the blueprint for how we do that in other, in other locations and really start to grow teams and capability around that yeah. so we can really turn the dial up um, in, in a way that we haven't seen yet. I really like the point that you made there by getting the blueprint right and then rolling it out across mo multiple global uh, markets. It's brilliant. Um, now, we saw that 5B had a big take up in Movember, which is a wonderful cause. Um, did you take part and how much did the team raise over at 5B? We, we did, yeah. We, um, we, we described the mission that we're on as being a, a, a long and ambitious one and, and therefore a journey that we need to in the right way. And we try to invest back into a lot of different parts of that. Um, with our team. Our team got really excited and behind the cause. I think well, well-being um, for our team generally and, and also for, for, for male um, kind of health issues is, is obviously a really significant part of, of staying the course for, um, for solving climate change by 2050. Um, and, and our team really got behind that. So um, uh, Nathan Tones, um, who works in our finance team, um, was a real spearhead there. And I gave Nathan um, the option as an accountant to choose between two, two X to five X um, co-contribution from 5B to all the money that the team raised. Um, and he chose five X unsurprisingly. So um, yeah, so we, we've had an awesome fundraising drive for that. Oh, wonderful. We do have to wrap things up, but Scott, how remarkable is it to see companies like this going global into these huge markets? Oh, it is just fantastic, Holly, and this is really the future. Um, these sorts of jobs, these companies, if, um, if people are graduating in engineering or science or accounting or economics or whatever it is, and you want an exciting future, mm. join a company like 5B. It is going to be the next 10, 20 years. It's going to be amazing. Oh, incredible. Um, Chris, thank you so much for your time. It's lovely to hear what you guys are doing and pioneering those global markets. Um, good on you. Thank you. See you again soon, hopefully. Scott, see you soon. Cheers, Chris. Cheers, Holly. Yeah.